What's going on, Bedra fans? I'm back in the home base. We got the recruiting cannons to fire. The boys are here. We're excited for it on Wisconsin, and let's go. What a big commitment today that we're going to talk about on Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to it. It's Badgers After Dark. It is one o'clock Eastern time. We're getting this thing started. I've been on the road all day. If you notice, if you're an everydayer, um, the bat my background's different. I'm back at my home base. Uh, I've been rehabbing the cabin, so I'm back. A lot to talk about, but you know we're gonna get a show off when a guy like Darian Dupree commits. So let's get Justin in. Let's get Cannon in. Uh, let's bring in the boys and let's talk about it, guys. We gotta fire the cannons. Yeah. Bounce, wow, wow! Welcome to Badgers After Dark. This is definitely <laughs> this is def- and by the way, all the psychos out there tuning in at one o'clock Eastern, you're one of us. This and for everyone who's not, we love you too, and you're the normal ones, and we take all people here. But for all the ones tuning in live to this, you guys are amazing. You're one of us. Let's sound the cannons. Fire right. the recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. Guys, Fire uh, the recruiting cannons. Oh, it's looping. Uh, no <laughs> one it's it's after Madison. dark. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let's take that off. All right, All right guys. Uh, let's talk about it. Daring Dupree commits. Four-star running back out of Chicago, Illinois. 5'11", 195 pounds. We've talked about Dupree a ton on this show. Cannon, you are, your light went off, man. I can't see you. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, much better. So, Daring Dupree commits. Huge commit. We've talked about it. Justin, man, let, let's talk about this is big time. This is a huge talent for Wisconsin. Uh, yes. Uh, first off, he's he's a composite four star. He should be a four star on every side. If you watch his film, I don't know what you're doing if you don't have him as a four star. Like he's one of the most explosive backs that I've seen the Badgers get in recent history, and we have a pretty solid list of guys. This is kind. Of, let's put it this way: Taylor was the last guy you looked at where you're like, "This guy's a four star. Why is he not a four star in the composite?" That's kind of what we're seeing with when you look at a guy like Darian Dupree. Everything you look at him, the only thing that you could really knock him on is you you kind of wonder how big he's actually going to get. But it doesn't really fit his skill set to be a guy that you pack on a ton of pounds on. He's really explosive, has great vision. He's super elusive. So he's the type of guy that you want for this type of offense where you're going to spread things out and let a guy just slash through. He actually reminds me a little bit of the Packers back. Um, in terms of how he runs. He's just a guy that has really good balance. Like, he's not a super big guy, but he plays more physical than his size and just is really good at moving forward, even though you wouldn't expect him to be able to do it as much as he does for his size. Yeah, I um, I really like – I think his best attribute is, like, his balance. When – it take it doesn't take – you don't see him going down to, to one guy. I mean, it's taken three, four guys at the time to bring him down. I mean, if you look at his film – a lot of times, guys aren't going to bring it down. He'll just go out of bounds sometimes. And he's still up. Um, I think he's explosive. I think he's elusive. I think he's got all the tools. And I think he's going to be very good for us. I love the films. Let's start. Like, there's some players you watch film of, and you, you don't need to know anything <laughs> about football to know that that dude is special, right? That yeah. dude has V8, high octane. Inject him, please, into Phil Longo's offense and watch what happens. He's, he's the treasure of this class. Oh, it's incredible. His and and uh, Cannon, you hit on it. His contact balance is ridiculous. It is absolutely unbelievable. The arm tackles, the the traffic, the the stuff he's able to run through just because he refuses to go down. And there's another element of this that I love. Like he he it, he really refuses to go down. He mm-hmm. fights for every single yard. There's people dragging off of him. He's got juice. Well, actually, maybe we shouldn't never use the term juice for <laughs> running backs anymore. Maybe that's something you can't use. Yeah, for let's backs. just let that one go. USC can have that. <laughs> um, let's not use juice. But he is, he's is—he's got electricity, right? He is a big yeah. play potential guy. theres And the other thing I really like about him really quick is he, on the film, he flashes everything. He runs in between tackles, showing vision and balance. He runs outside the tackles, outrunning angles. He catches the ball. I think this is a dynamic. This is one of my favorite mm-hmm. gets in the entire class. This is the type of running back that Wisconsin doesn't traditionally get. They don't normally have a guy like this. This is the type of guy that an Ohio State gets or or one of the Blue Bloods like Clemson or Alabama that you watch go out there and they carve up a team because they can get them in space 
and that guy is dynamic when you get him into open space like one-on-one on somebody and they can make them pay. Wisconsin has had more plotting backs. Now, Taylor, excluding Taylor, we haven't really had game breakers in terms of guys that just have jets. And Dupree is one of those guys that if you misjudge him, he's going to make you look stupid on the field. Yeah, he's he's more of a uh, traditional just like zone running scheme type of running back. Um, what we used to get since we ran a power scheme, we used to get bigger backs. You no, know, not not necessarily top speed, um, minus um, Jonathan Taylor, but um, I think that he fits Phil Longo's offense absolutely perfectly, um, and he brings us something that um, Atuka uh, didn't bring. He mm-hmm. brings more elusiveness. He brings more speed. Um, I don't. I, I don't think we'll use him, you know, if we get towards the goal line. I think that's when Atuka comes in. But he'll be more of an all-purpose back um, and every down back. Yeah, and conversely, uh, what I like about this, Atuka gives you something that Dupree doesn't, right? You're bringing in yeah. two completely different skill sets here. You're bringing yeah. in a guy that can be that all-purpose, every down, big play guy. And Atuka is more – could probably be your red zone guy, your short yardage guy. I, I just love the, the contrast of skill sets they're bringing in here. Um, one of the questions I want to get to, and we'll kick this around the table, is this is from, by the way, a ton of great comments, Gabe, TJ, Kendrick, a bunch of people here. Um, this one says, Kevin K asks, who does Dupree compare to? I know we were talking about this pre-show. Uh, Justin, you are, yeah, someone take this one. We'll kick it around. I'll, the I'll throw it out there. Like I just said, I mentioned Aaron Jones from the Packers. I think he, that's a similar type of skill set to that type of running back. If we want to do a Badger guy, I, I, told Ryan when we were coming in, I think he's a bigger version of Nate White. That's actually the guy he actually projects best with. A guy who's really good in tight spots, has great vision, has good balance, and is able to make people miss. Um, but he's got a, a broader frame, and he's he's more physical than what Nate White was. So it's just a difference there. Like, I guess you would say that he's like a Nate White on, uh, you know, the 2.0, if mm-hmm. you're going to look at it. Um, for Badger backs, I think that he compares most to James White, which I, I think his, his elusiveness is the same. Vision is the same. I think he is similar size to James White. I think Dupree is like James White 2.0, actually. Um, and then for NFL, I mean, I'd probably go Aaron Jones as well. I think he is pretty much the same back as Aaron Jones. Not as big, obviously, but um, those two are pretty easy comparisons in my eyes. Yeah, he's a hard one to comp for a badger back really because i think he's a little broader than james white but he does have that james white elusiveness um he's just a hard one to comp yeah. i see the nate white comp too that's an interesting one with the the ability in space you know like darian can put the foot in the dirt and just mm-hmm. leave people grasping for air i mean he breaks confidence bones out there it's incredible mm-hmm. to watch but he's he like you said he's bigger than nate white he's got mm-hmm. some dario ogubawale in the open space but i think he's a little faster maybe although i think Ogubuwale, he's got better i think he's got better vision too than what yeah i mean we're talking about nfl guys though like so yeah. Ogubawale, if he becomes that, that's a win, you yeah. know. Um, but he's this is a great get. I want to take a couple more comments, but I want to kick it back around the horn, guys. Are we? I guess we're going to get into this in the next segment. Um, in terms of if we're done at running back, we're going to get into that next segment. Robert Sorensen was thinking Monte Ball. Thoughts? Monte was a little bit bigger, and he came in heavier. I think Monte was about two thirty his first year, and then he slimmed down. I think he got down to like the what two fifteen, two twenty range. Mm-hmm. Um. Monte got more mobile. Um, I think that he he didn't have quite the gear that that Dupree has early. Like you see the explosiveness that when he puts his foot in the dirt and goes, we haven't. This is where like we compared him to Calhoun. I think he's actually got a little bit more more uh, hot top end speed than Calhoun had, but they're very similar in that they put the foot in the ground and they would just explode. And that's kind of what you see with Dupree. And and not that Ball didn't have good speed he just didn't have that type of gear right off the get-go to accelerate mm-hmm. i think i think ball, i think ball was more of a um more of a bruiser than dupree is gonna be i think yeah. ball was more um he didn't really try to juke people out he would just go straight through you i mean that, that was more of his game i mean he could juke you out he could be elusive if he wanted to but he he was more of a uh, a downhill kind of guy he had a great jump cut though yeah, yeah. and good power i mean he Ball was the epitome of just really good at just about everything, but maybe not great at too many things, yeah. except for scoring touchdowns. 30, <laughs> 39 in a year is pretty incredible That's still. Fair. All right, we got to take a quick break, come back. We're going to get into are we done at running back recruiting, and then we're going to get into a bunch of your comments, comments-heavy section next, and then we're going to finish up with just a quick discussion of how this class is coming along, plus get to all your comments on today's Badgers After Dark. 
I love that. We're going to do more of these. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. It's what I use. We've done a show, uh, Rajiv and I did an entire show on futures just for the Badgers. Um, you know, futures coming up this college football season. Our, listen, when we talked about the Badgers and their undefeated season odds, we're not saying they're going to go undefeated. We're saying at plus 1,900, when you look at the, the, the schedule, there's only one terrifying game. I mean, are they going to go undefeated? Almost certainly no, but put $10 on it at plus 1,900 and cheer along as a Badgers fan. Let's go join join that party with me. Uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Sign up now, get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't hit. Safe, secure, incredibly easy to use. The number one uh, sportsbook app in the country. It's what we use. It's what I use. Go get your futures bet on the Braves, on the Badgers, on the Suns, all my teams. They're all going to win next year. Anyway, uh, sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. And again, I want to say a quick thank you to everybody just tuning into the show. Uh, for all the crazies out there watching us live, it's one Eastern. You guys are incredible. Let's get everybody back in here. Justin, uh, Cannon. Guys, are we done at running back recruiting? Justin, you can take it. Sure. Uh, I think that they will try to get Jones in this if they can if they can massage the situation with Dupree. I, I don't know what he's thinking in terms of if, if he's open to this. I've heard hints that there might be some some negative recruiting going on with the fact that that we already have two backs now. Um, and I know they love Jones. He's a guy they would very much like to add. And I think looking at the running back room, it makes sense to add a guy that's that quality because we don't have guys that we look at as like legitimate running backs that are in that room besides the last couple guys. So I think they would love to get Jones in if they can make it happen. I don't know if the situation will play out that way. And I think that Jones, if he holds out and doesn't commit soon, is going to have some suitors that show up soon mm -hmm. looking at it, who are teams that missed on their plan A's and maybe he's a little down their list and they're like, Hey, this guy's got a lot of talent. He's still out there and he'll have some new offers or teams that come on really strong. I, I, I think they're still going to go after Dylan Jones. I think he brings something. I think he's more of a burner than Dupree is. I think he's a lot, I, I think he's quite a bit faster and I think he's more of a – he can get a little bigger. Um, I don't know if he's as elusive, but I think they're still – if they can still get D Dylan Jones, they're still going to try to get him. But if he ends up going somewhere else, I, I don't think they'll go after anybody else. Yeah, and we had, uh, again, a bunch of comments I want to get into. But, Justin, you can back me up on this. So this isn't hyperbole. I've said from the beginning I preferred a little bit Dupree to Jones. I think both are great. Mm -hmm. But I, I Dupree to me is the top <clears throat> of the board. Um, yeah, I Jones agree with that too. On the cake. Uh, but like you already nailed your plan a plus target here yeah. um i i love the pickup let's let's get into some comments here uh let's see we got da wolf been looking forward to this all day badger bagley bagley badger says can't wait to watch another running back develop welcome to pre uh lord croy that is a great name hopefully we get the edge rusher from hawaii when he announces in a couple days i i think he's a lock i, I, I think, think you should I, you, I you should lock. pay attention to that one yeah you should you should definitely pay attention to that announcement yeah, it's Lafayette. Um, we've talked about him on here before. He's a, he's a big time target. Pretty sure I'm pretty sure he's a lock. Yep. Uh, Falls fifty six says burning the midnight oil. Huh? Listen, this is locked on Badgers. We're here for you guys all the time, except for that one day when that guy said I wasn't here for him. Except for that. Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's keep going here. A uh, bunch more. Brian D. What great news! Next, you're going to tell me Con committed. I mean, if we could manifest that, we would gladly do it. I would gladly take on. <laughs> let's 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 dive into that ledge really quickly, very quick. What's your percentage chance Con ends up as a Badger? I'm gonna say I'm not very high at this point. I gotta be honest, Ver guys. Versus I'm the at, field. First, yeah. I'm at like 15, Badgers 15, versus 15%. the field. Yeah, I was gonna say 20. It's probably about right. There's there's a couple of big sharks that are circling him, that are scary. But I I know Wisconsin from what I've heard feels pretty good about their chances still, but we'll see. I mean, we've seen the staff be really confident before. Um, sometimes, you you know, with with recruitments like this, it's really hard, especially it sounds like Khan's not the most open in terms of uh, his mm -hmm. recruitment. It can be really difficult for them to have a grasp of what's really going on with all of this. And sometimes like this, people get caught completely off guard. So uh, I think currently – um, right now, I have it about 40%, but the longer this drags out, the, the worse it is for us. If, if this goes, you know, on past into next year, I, I, I don't think we get him. 
This is a spot where we need Rajiv on the show too, just to bump up the percentages a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I'll say this. I mean, if he goes into the fall, like the, the one positive is there's no there's no more open sessions for coaches to, to view him and likely offer. But the problem is, is the new coaches that have come in are now going to have that time if he waits till the fall to really build up a relationship with him. And Wisconsin's just been there the whole time. Mm-hmm. And we saw with Freitag or Free Tag that there's a there's a very real aspect of being there the whole time and kind of establishing that relationship. And you have to hope that that's what plays out in the Badgers' favor, mm-hmm. that he he really appreciates that we've been there the whole time and that he looks at some of these, you know, Johnny come lately's and he's like, yeah, that's nice. I appreciate the attention, but I'm going to go with somebody that's been there from the start. Yeah. Uh, Pretag did say, he, he said in an interview, he said um, he, he thought to himself if he would be more upset if he – um, waited for a, a better offer to come, mm-hmm. um, or would he be more upset at himself if he waited too long and his spot got filled? Um, so yeah, I I think we could get con. We're I think we're in a pretty good place, but the longer it goes, the, the worse it is. Yeah, I, I think that's a true statement. Um, this one's from Gabe Ramos. Need some more basketball videos. Football recruiting is so boring. How can it be boring when you just got Darian Dupree? But I will point out, I love basketball, and I do want to get more of that content out here. So I'm here for you on that one, Gabe. Hey, hey, I'm trying to. I I talked to Ryan about that too, man. Yeah, yep. Everybody's trying to get, listen. Here's the thing. I so let, really quick. Let let me because it's Badgers after the dark. Like we can go behind the curtain <laughs> a tiny bit, right? Um, we did this incredible, in my opinion. And Justin, you were on there. Rajiv was on there. Dylan was on there. It was a ton of fun. The basketball draft show, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that gets less views than if I talk about like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can talk about Nick Evers and he'll get more views than the basketball draft yeah. show. So if you guys want more basketball yeah. content, y'all got to tune in. But we're still going to do it anyway. Don't worry. I love yeah. basketball. I was, a little, I was a little upset. Chucky fell to the bench, man. I, Dude, Wisconsin has low-key had a lot of really good yeah. point guards that have come through in the last 20 years. Yeah, and he was, to be fair, he was my first pick for my – I'm glad like, you took him. I was waiting. I was like, <laughs> you, better, you better go. He's my sixth pick, man. Really. I love Chucky. I love Chucky. He's my sixth man. All right, let's keep going here. Um Tyler Romaine says Dupree is exactly what this class needed. Kendrick Stumbris, who is a, a really good writer over at Badger Notes, said, uh, not asking about Dupree's 40 time. What is Ryan's bedtime? N.A. <laughs> not, not existent. I, you know, I'm, I'm legit curious what his 40 time is. If I had to take a shot, I would say it's in the four fives. He, he's okay, a guy that has some – he's got I some think, good verse. I don't think he's an absolute breakaway guy like Taylor was, but he's a guy that can act, he'll he'll run away from people. I think he's mid four fives. Oh, uh, here's Robert Swords and Cannon just joins doing some of these videos. Happy to have them. We're all better together. And I, lo- I love doing this, man. <laughs> Thanks, Robert, man. And Robert, thank you for being in that chat, man. That's that's the other thing really quick that I think makes this community unique is we are kind of a, a club. Almost mm-hmm. like we kind of have our own unique community that we're building around the Badgers. And I think all of us are here because of all of us, right, if that makes sense. Um, let's keep going here. Kendrick Stumber says – uh, Dupree is the kind of pass catching talent that Longo should be salivating over. Well, I'm sure he is. I'm sure that's why he's one of the guys that's so high on their board. Like the, besides him being such a great slashing back, that's the other part of the Aaron Jones comp that I look at is Jones is a plus plus receiver out of the backfield. And that's definitely what I view Dupree as. He's a guy that's going to be a problem that they can motion out and he can be a, a problem for teams to try and cover with a linebacker. And he's just going to carve up guys like that. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a type of weapon that long, – so Longo is so creative. He's talked about it. You give me tight ends, I'm going to use tight ends. You give, you give me – like the, the real constant with Longo is I develop great quarterback play, and then he fills in skill positions yeah. around him as yeah. best he has. He'll, right? he'll so, distribute it to who he's got the most exactly. talent. But what we're, what we're doing at Wisconsin is we're building a room of running back talent, receiver talent, and tight end talent. He's going to have all the chess pieces on the board, and we know he can coach up quarterbacks. This this could be legitimately one of the better offenses that we develop. I mean, in the history of Wisconsin over the next several years. Again, that's a bit of a low bar, but <laughs> speaking of Longo, I could almost see, you know, I'm I'm as you know, I'm really high on Chris Brooks. I, I could almost see Longo, you know, doing some packages where Chris Chris Brooks will line up as like a as a tight end since he's you know a lot he's a little bigger for a wide receiver. We've discussed I, I could see I'll definitely that. offline. Him and McIntosh actually were two yeah. guys that that Ryan and I discussed that were like I could see them playing him and that and just splitting him out like a, a big tight end because I could see him growing into a two twenty five guy, which is basically borderline tight end for us. 
Uh, he's uh, Chris Brooks and McIntosh would be nightmare matchups for a linebacker. I just mm-hmm. I'll put that right there. They're not going to keep up with them. They're not going to be able to out physical them because they're also pretty big. It it's it creates amazing mismatches that you know uh, tight end might not be able to because may not be as fast or you know. No, I agree. It's like again, man. I keep saying bad draft to dark, but if you remember the concept of the pocket battleship in World War II, right? <laughs> Faster than all the small ships, bigger or no, bigger than all the small ships and faster than all the big ships. That's like Macintosh and Brooks. Like it's they're just bigger than the fast quick guys and they're faster <laughs> than the big guys. They, they're mismatch problems. And that's what Phil Longo, by the way, if anyone had a pocket battleship on their Jeopardy card today, uh, their, their, their you know, bingo card today, you win that one. Um, we got to take a quick break. We are going to come back. We're going to talk about how this class is shaping up. Six, two, four, seven composite four star recruits already which in a first year, full, first full cycle for Fickle to me feels like an incredible achievement. We're going to talk about that and more on today's Locked and Badgers, but first a quick break for our friends of the show. And a quick second to say thank you to everybody tuning in, a bunch of people in the comments as well. Uh, we're going to get to as much as we can on today's Locked On Badgers, Badgers After Dark, a fun show, and let's get the boys back on. Let's get Justin and Cannon. Um, guys, let's kick it over to you. Initial impressions, I shouldn't even say initial because we've talked about this class as it's developed, but, you know, six, two, four, seven composite four star players already um, potential to obviously add a couple more and potential for a couple of these players to get bumps. How do we feel about this first full cycle for Luke Fickle up to this point? I personally love it. I think this has been a really good class. And I've looked at the film on virtually all of these guys. You have. And having looked at the film, there is a noticeable difference, at least to me from what I've seen in prior classes in terms of physical upside for a lot of these guys. I look at some of the guys that we have on our our commit list right now, and there are guys that I think are legitimately four-star talents. I think Corey is a guy that I I think deserves a bump to a four-star. I think Jensen has the physical tools where I think he could not be a four-star, but I wouldn't be shocked if he was. So I I, I could see him bump up into a low four-star. And then there's guys I look at that I'm like, this guy is legitimately – I think he's he's a four star, but he's actually better than what he is. Like I look at a guy like Mendel, and I, he's he is a four star, but as an interior guy, he's a really good interior guy. I would not be shocked to see him as a 92, 93, looking at how talented he actually is on the, on his film. Um, but there are guys like Press Kamir Prescott, one of our safety commits. He's a guy that's right. that I could see him be a fringe four star or be a you know low four star. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of talent in this group, and even some of the corners, like Harper, another guy that's pretty close. Wisconsin's got a lot of fringe guys this year, and this is not normal for us from a class standpoint. We typically do not have this many guys that are borderline, and really what it takes to, for them to turn into a composite four-star is one service to bump them, and suddenly now they're a four-star. Yeah, um, definitely. They're definitely going after a lot more higher, higher um, ceiling, lower floor guys, in my opinion compared to what we, you know, used to get, um, you know, the lower, the mid three stars that, you know, they're going to be, they could come in and be pretty solid, but they may not have the the NFL upside that, you know, a Dupree or a guard has. Um, I could see us, you know, I mean, we're probably going to get around 22 commits or so. Um, I could see them getting the targets they want and maybe they go after maybe another receiver or, you know, go down the board a little bit, maybe get another offensive lineman. Um, they're definitely going to have to sure up the D line though, obviously, um, that's got to be priority. Number one, they, they're, they're going to have to get at least a couple more D line commits. Um, but overall the class is amazing. I, I love everything about it. it. It's, it's great. I'm super stoked for all the recruits and I can't wait to watch them. Yeah. I mean, listen, you hit on the one real fly in the ointment and obviously listen, not every prospect we like is going to work out. That's how recruiting works. I think there's a comment in here somewhere that said, we always get excited for these guys. Yeah, it's true. Cause it's recruiting. Like if, if you're going to follow recruiting, you're going to get excited about big recruiting wins, right? Like that's how it works. If you're not going to follow recruiting, then yeah, it doesn't matter. But um, you hit on the one fly in the ointment. It's the defense line recruiting, you know, and that is the one spot in this cycle and Justin, to your point, I think it's it's gone really well. Um, mm-hmm. they, they've restocked the offensive line. That was a huge need coming into this year. They got five of them. You know, they, they hit just hit on a four-star running back. They got their quarterback. They hit on the secondary really well. Number it's, one target at wide receiver. Number one target at receiver. Uh, got a great tight end. Like, the class has done really well, dot, 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 except for defense line, which, you know, it's not over yet. Um, but that is the one spot that's the fly in the ointment at this point. Was, and, was Kion our, our number one target? 
I, I, I thought Amari, I Amari on Twitter him, was our number one. They they were both high on the board, but there's talk that that Kyan was actually number one. Interesting. And I, I given given his ball skills, I I think that they view him as a guy that's much higher on their board than than some others. Okay. They're 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 viewed a little bit differently as receivers. I I honestly think if you look at the things that will translate on on Barry, there are some areas that he's ahead of where Stewart is. Like he's just more defined at this point. But from a physical upside standpoint, that's yeah. where Stewart has it. Like yeah. he, Stewart doesn't have the ball skills and and some of the crazy things that we've seen from Barry at this point. But he's got more physical upside to him. Yeah, Stewart's sporting that Georgia offer too. Like yeah. that, that's some <laughs> I, that's some offer candy. That you're not wrong. Candy. <laughs> um, people obviously in the chat know about my love of Isaac Garendo. Justin said, did Garendo walk so Dupree can fly? <laughs> Another one here, Robert Swartzen just says Garendo with the sad face. Yeah, <laughs> I, will for, I will forever die on this hill. Isaac Garendo was shockingly underused during his healthy time at Madison. But, I just think that there was uh, – we ha- we couldn't find a way to really use him because I think he I- – can I just interject there? Because I have a way. Hand him the ball. <laughs> I no, guess that's not, true, yeah, but I'm not crushing you. Up. He's a he's a he's a burner, but his burning he needs to get going a little bit first. He's mm-hmm. one of those guys, and he's not really elusive. So you know, handing him the ball from the backfield, um, unless you know there's a gaping hole and he can get going a little bit, it's hard for him. You know, cut a little. bit. I wanted to see more jet sweeps from him and stuff like that because then it gets him going a little bit. So. I am the reason why, and I think this is why Garendo wasn't used as much. And this is why I really want them to go after a guy like Dylan Jones. I don't like running backs being shifted or guys being shifted to running back from other positions. If you're not a natural running back trying to turn somebody into that, there are innate skills that kids build up playing it from Pop Warner all the way up, where you get a guy like Dupree who's clearly been a running back with his vision and the way he moves on the field. And there are guys that are great athletes like. You know, Cade Iacomelli could turn into a great player, but we don't know with him as opposed to some of these other guys. And that's where I get a little scared where you you shift a guy into that room like like Iker or him, and it's like, all right, I don't know if I can turn you into somebody who's going to be a high-level player for us. These guys you're bringing in that are four stars, they're guys that are being universally looked at, and people are saying, we think it will translate. Not necessarily, we're going to shift you here and see if you fit. And that's that's kind of why I like seeing us bring in guys who we know are running backs. The pedigree's there. Yeah. Uh, Paul Buckeye says, "Come on, Badger Nation, hit that like button." If I can, being a Luke fan and a Buckeye, then y'all can. <laughs> Paul Buckeye has quickly become one of my favorite uh, Buckeye fans. I only there's only like two of my life, but he's on that list. <laughs> Like, wow, a Buckeye fan, a nice Buckeye fan. That's a yeah, fish, man. Yeah. Paul Buckeye's the man. He's been on several. I'm, guess, I'm guessing Paul just loves football. <laughs> and, and I would say probably. I will say from the bottom of my heart, though, Michigan fans are by far, in my opinion, the worst. The, the worst. Oh, they're, really? They're the so, Big Oh, hundred percent. I, I, I mean, so bad. I think Paul will d- agree with this. I my my least favorite fan base is by far Notre Dame. <laughs> it's not close. Hmm. Some not of like, the recruiting not, battles we've had with them recently. I dislike them so much for their attitude towards. I don't us. know if I hate Michigan fans as much as you do, Cannon. No, I, 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 I haven't them. had I, enough. I haven't dealt with them enough, and having trounced them those couple of years in a row where we just blew them off the field. I mean, Minnesota fans are the worst in the Big Ten, right? Just by default. Oh, yeah. or, well, I do hate Minnesota, so yeah. I'm I curious. will say though, Iowa fans love them. They're so cool. Yeah, Iowa fans are good people for the no most part. No one touts a 1906 national championship like Minnesota fans. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Zace says, uh, are we really going to lose out on Uma to Stanford? Probably. Um, it sure looks that way. Yeah. It's <laughs> You can't really say losing out, man. Stanford is a heck of an opportunity for any kid. For yeah. any nerd. Like it's so, it's so yeah. Hey, April, no, they're I putting know. together I, a heck of a class. I'm kidding, man. I, I, I was crunching the numbers the other day looking at it, and because we're not going to take as many commits as them, we're not catching them. Like if yeah. they if they grab Ume, we're not we're just we're not gonna catch them. The numbers are too high. Justin, I will agree a little bit with you though. My dad is a Notre Dame fan, and he's been rubbing in my face that he thinks they're gonna land Owen Owen Schubig yeah. in the next couple months. So they, they, he's I hope not. In my face. They might, but don't worry, we're gonna kick him in the teeth in twenty six anyway. So I'm not so worried about it. Sure, hope we do. Let me just put it out there. I've heard Strubig Owen is leaning to Notre Dame as well. Yeah. Um. I'll just put that out there, unfortunately. Um, let's keep going here. 
Justin says, with all the transfer receivers, the only returning receiver people talk about is DK, but watching some Bell and Lewis State from last year makes me think we are six to seven deep at that position. I think, I think the second deeper. part of that statement is co- completely correct, if not more. Yeah, uh, we, I, we've talked about Tretch coming in and being a guy who might be as low as like eighth on the depth chart, and he's a guy like in, in previous Badger staffs, we would have looked at and said, this is a guy that's going to see the field this year. So it tells you how deep that room has become. Yeah, I think we're. I think we could. I think six, seven deep is, is low balling. I think we're almost. We could be eight, nine deep. I mean, there, there's a lot of receivers <laughs> on our deep depth chart that are really good that could see the field this year. Yeah, I, 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 oh, sorry, really quick. We went through the the list, but I mean, just really quickly, let's rattle off. You got obviously the three from last year: DK, um, Bell, Lewis. You have CJ, Pauling, Green. That's already six. Burroughs, Burroughs. Burroughs. Well, I don't know if Burroughs will play. We like. I don't Burroughs. think Burroughs will, but 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 him and McIntosh both showed some some things in spring. Vinny too. Vinny Anthony showed some really good things in spring. Like, like, there's Brooks. a lot of talent in that room. Chris Brooks. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Brooks Brooks probably might have pushed had we, he not we gotten can injured. Ten names right here that you, yeah. you I know. can see. I mean, and every one of those dudes. Here's the thing, right? Here, here's the 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 kind of the trick of this. If you can name a player and, and in your head be like, yeah, I'm kind of excited about him. When was the last time you could go seven, eight deep at receiver at Wisconsin and say, yeah, I'm kind of excited about that guy. Seriously. Like it's never, it hasn't happened before my time, before my time, 99% of our fan base wouldn't have been able to go past four on the depth chart in most years. They just wouldn't know who was, who was further down the list. It's it's us nutsos that are recruiting. I mean, other than Nick Toon, how good was our receiver group when Russell Wilson was here? I mean, Uh, we have a him yeah, and Abadaris had a crazy good year that year. But it wasn't um, deep, though. To that point, it wasn't deep. It was had Duckworth. Duckworth. Yeah, Duckworth was their three, and he was like 15 catches, I think, maybe. That yeah, was it was a lot. Greatest it was, catch of all They time. really used the running back and tight end yeah. room for I mean, that season. It was a top-heavy group. Um, certainly two NFL guys at the top of that, but it wasn't a deep group like we yeah. have now. Now, we, we'll have to wait and see if the top of this group is as top, you know, is as talented as that group, but – uh, Paul Buckeye does say Michigan fans are the worst. Mike says Nebraska fans, thumbs up. I don't know if he means Nebraska fans are good or bad. I think Nebraska fans are good people. They're, they're uh, not bad. They've been beaten down so much that I think they've stopped fighting. It's true. Um, you know, I living in Nebraska, it they can be, but maybe that's just because I'm a Wisconsin fan and everybody knows I'm a Wisconsin fan, so they just they just want to yeah. troll me all the time. But other than I mean, that, they they're can't, pretty, they're I mean, they can't I mean, really control you considering yeah. dominant. Well, how many how many in a row did we win? Like eight? The, nine la, the last time they, the last time they beat us was 2012. That was the last time they beat us. Yeah, yeah. It's been yeah. over a decade. And, and we were up 17 to nothing in that game before our quarterback got injured, if I recall. Uh, Robert Sorensen says Ryan doesn't have to deal with Michigan fans being in Connecticut. I don't have to deal with any college fans in Connecticut. That's that's the terrible part. It's a this is a college football wasteland out here. You should be you should be living outside. Like you should be. It should be like say anything. You should be standing outside of his house with a boombox. I'll tell you this, on Wisconsin. I, I I ran into a random really quickly. I ran into a random Wisconsin fan at a CVS out here, and I followed him back in the store and pretended to buy something so I could ask him on a mandate so we could watch a football game together. And he was so creeped out that he left the store without talking to me. <laughs> that's how I few mean, college football fans are out I mean, here. My wife was like, "You're stalking that, him." I'm like, "That, is, that is that is a very fair reaction." <laughs> I'm just I, like, I like walked back into the store and just pretended to buy things. I'm like, "I need floss and razor blades and gum." And I'm like, "By the way, you're a Wisconsin fan. I am some duct wanna, tape and rope. You want to come to my basement and watch a game with me?" <laughs> he was like, "Oh man, it was." It's listen, Victor. It's not creepy. It's college football. There's a difference. You know how Conan O'Brien has a podcast called Conan Needs a Friend. Yeah, <laughs> there needs to be a Ryan one like that. I'm ridiculous. Sometimes. He goes around Connecticut looking for people mind. to hang out and watch sports with. It just came to mind. We should have a conversation about our 2016 season when we, I think it was 2016. I think we were 10 and two, and with losses to Michigan and Ohio State, really close games. I think it was mm-hmm. 14 to seven. I think honestly, that could have been one of our best teams of a lot. Like sure. that, I mean, we beat Michigan and we we go twelve and zero. Or even if we even if we beat Ohio State that year, like let's say we lose to Michigan and beat Ohio State, we beat Michigan in the Big Ten title game. We're in the we're in the BCS national championship. We, we've been in a couple of those situations, right? The two thousand seventeen year. The what was the year with um. Oh, I'm losing my mind. Very well, crazy. okay. So the big thing I'll say on that, the legitimate difference is, though, I think 2011 team, that offense 
could have played with anybody. And I think Oregon was actually the perfect storm of a bad team for us because our defense just couldn't deal with their speed. And that was a track team that Oregon had. I think that year, that was the year that Bama and LSU had their, they were kind of more of like a pro style power team. And I think Wisconsin would have had an easier time playing that style of football game with our offense versus oh, playing I a team like, like Oregon. Ate that up. We would have, because uh, we would look we, at most Badger teams in the past 20 years. Our best thing on defense is we stuff the run. That's, that's what yep. we, you know, that's what we do. It, it, but it's teams that will spread us out and throw the ball. That's, that's what they kill us. Um, so I we think do. we play anybody else against other than Oregon. I think we do. We almost win that game. Yeah, that, that Oregon game was a tough matchup. But, I mean, it was still there. Every every Both the Oregon games have been there for the taking. You just haven't. Danny Davis still freaking haunts me. You just haven't, haven't been able to, he fumbled to the pull ball. it through. Yeah. Um, Adam Otto asks, if my, my new friend was before after the pants, was I looking homeless? Probably. It was before I got the bird dogs. By the way, I got a bad review about my bird dogs ad people said i was denigrating homeless people I'm, I'm not denigrating anybody i'm just telling you i got confused for a bomb that's all it is um i'm not trying to make fun of any type of people let's keep going here um guys i think that's maybe our show today i did justin freeze i think i lost justin um we lost justin that's probably a good sign that we need to wrap it up we got 120 people watching all the psychos out there tuning in at 1 hey, thank you everybody for watching man you guys are amazing. Cannon, thank you for jumping in. Justin, I don't know where you went, my friend, but thank you so much. On Wisconsin, and uh, I didn't get to all the comments, but we'll keep it going. A bunch more comments here. I, I'm sorry, man. I can't get to them all. But, oh, John Kottmeyer, let's get to this one. Come down to Tennessee. Uh, we'll watch a game with you. Love the show, guys. See, that's what I need. I need some people to watch a game with. John, I will – I'm first of all, I've been through Tennessee. It's absolutely beautiful. I would be – I would love to take you up on that if I ever get down there and watch a game with you guys. That would be amazing. Ryan, next next time um, Wisconsin plays Nebraska at Nebraska, come down. I'll, I'll watch the game with you. Let's go. See, this is what I, I need friends to watch the game with. Um, and, you know, maybe Lockdown Badgers is just that community that I've needed and hopefully that other people need it as well, which is the whole point of this, right? Cannon just sent a message one day in the Discord. He's like, hey, can I jump on the show? And what did I say? I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get more voices, more community, more involvement. That's 100% of what this show is all about. Um, all right, let's wrap it up there. Bruce says, great show. Robert Swordson says, get Jack Dunn on the show. I would love to talk to Jack Dunn. Um, let's keep going. And on Wisconsin, really do appreciate you guys. Cannon, thank you. Justin, wherever you are in the blackness of your YouTube camera. Appreciate you too, man. On Wisconsin, and let's go. We'll talk again Monday, I think. Probably not tomorrow. We'll talk again Monday.